the honorable member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. It's an honor to uh, rise for the first time in this session of Parliament to speak to Bill C-56, an act to amend the excise tax and the Competition Act. The lack of affordable housing has been top of mind in my riding to Bruce Gray Owen Sound as home and rental prices just have continued to increase over the last eight years. To give you some data, Madam Speaker, 20, in 2015, when the current government took, took office, rental units were on average around $700 a month. I did have fairly wide variance. I do represent a large rural riding, but now that uh, rent is well over $1,000 per month. An average house price in 2015 was $311,000, uh, whereas now it's over $608,000. Further complicating this is home sales are down over 27% below the five-year average and over 31% below the 10-year average. This speaks directly to the impact this Liberal government's inflationary deficit spending is having on the economy and the ability for people to get into homes, not only to get them built, but to actually afford to either build them or move into rental units. <coughs> I think this has finally come home to roost with the Liberal government and they're acting now, although be it far too late. And it's funny, Madam Speaker, that they finally come forward with a bill to actually help make life more affordable for Canadians at the same time that the Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition introduced his bill, the Buildings Home Not Bureaucracy Act, and they liked the bill so much that they decided to take a piece of it and call it their own. Yeah. I guess you could say, Madam Speaker, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I would offer the Liberals could save themselves a ton of work by just passing the, the more comprehensive bill from the Leader of the Opposition. One of the aspects of the bill, Madam Speaker, that I do question is that how is it going to address the immediate housing crisis that Canadians are facing right now? Because if you read the bill, these actual rental housing units don't even have to be completed until, until 12 years from now in the year 2035. As I said, Madam Speaker, this housing issue has been going on and I've been hearing about it almost my whole time since I was elected. But I, I hosted a housing task force meeting uh, a year, just over a year ago back in my riding because I recognized that this issue actually transcends all levels of, elected, of government and elected officials and stakeholders. Everybody's got a piece to play in solving this. And those stakeholders included my counties, my health units, realtors, builders, chambers of commerce, not-for-profits, co-op housing groups, and as well as the construction se uh, sector. And just to paint a bit of the picture of the complexity of this issue that we're facing, Madam Speaker, and why this bill doesn't go far enough. Increasing cost of lands to build on, rising interest rates, the nimbyism that's existing at all levels, but in particular at the municipal level, development charges in red tape, labor shortages in the construction sector, high inflation on building goods and everyday goods called, caused by not only supply chain issues, but more importantly, by the carbon tax and the deficit spending of this Liberal government. This cost of living crisis has basically exhausted the not-for-profits in my area as the demand for aid continues to increase, and they've been calling for the GST removal on not-for-profits as well, not just what's being proposed in Bill C-56. Existing landlords are hesitant to rent out their properties due to the challenges that so many Canadians are facing because of the uh, of a frequency of home takeovers. And again, the excessive red tape for private investment because the federal government programs are too restrictive. Ultimately, Madam Speaker, removing the GST off eligible purpose-built rentals is just one small drop in the bucket for what the residents in my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound need to see in order to fix this housing crisis. The government likes to talk about some of their other programs like the Housing Accelerator Fund. I had the privilege of sitting on the Yuma Committee when we first studied the Housing Accelerator Fund. 
but it's actually failed to de demonstrate its utility. Today, I'm only aware of one announcement of any funding actually going out under that program. And when I asked the minister specifically at committee a year ago about how is this going to help a large portion of Canada, i.e. those of us that live in rural Canada, he basically admitted, or he did admit, on committee, on the public record, that this funding is geared towards the urban, major urban centres in this country and not for the rest of Canada. Another example that we discussed, I, uh, I was lucky enough to question the uh, president of the CMHC, uh, why at that committee as well, is just the level of bureaucracy and the complications, and I'll get into a specific example of the challenges that uh, my not-for-profits were facing. Fortunately, we had a good uh, ultimately, we, I was successful in advocating for a change, but I had a not-for-profit senior ho uh, housing development that was running into roadblocks due to the Liberal government's inflationary spendings, the costs that have gone up, as I highlighted earlier, to the point where they now had to buy down, according to the CMHC, through their financial institution, the actual lending rate but they weren't allowed to actually talk or renegotiate that because now they're effective, their, price, uh, their prices had doubled, uh, and I'll get into the specifics a little bit later, and yet they were being told they couldn't communicate in it. Fortunately, when I had the president there, we were able to get a solution solved, but the point is that too much bureaucracy is just, again, causing the problems. We need less gatekeepers, not more. I'll get into a little bit of the specifics here, Madam Speaker, as I was just mentioning. So in this specific case, the construction uh, costs have gone from $3 million to $7 million alone for this not-for-profit. And uh, this is why this is so important that we change it. In prepping for this uh, speech, Madam Speaker, I did reach out to uh, a number of the stakeholders and not-for-profits in my area to say, how is this going to help them? And they, uh, they feel that, look, it's a step in the right direction, but there's plenty of uh, tangible steps that the government needs to make in order to make more substantial changes. As I mentioned, charities, not-for-profits. I got the Habitat for Humanity in my riding, a charity which builds homes for those low-income residents, and they suggested removing the GST off the sale of those homes that are being built for charities as well, because that's not being mentioned here at all in the bill. And a challenge that they specifically face is when fair market value rises, so does the GST, which makes it then more expensive for these charities like the uh, Habitat for Humanity to build these homes for low-income Canadians, especially given the affordability crisis that uh, Canadians are facing, which has now reduced the charitable donations that these charities are receiving. Additional feedback that I got from them. Remove the compounding carbon tax and clean fuel standards as they increase costs significantly for charities as they receive no rebate off of these additional taxes. So matters, Madam Speaker, in, in sort of reiterating and closing my speech today, ultimately Bill C-56 contains a number of half measures. Ideas taken from the opposition parties including, as I already mentioned, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, as well my, uh, my, uh, on the competition side, my colleague from the Bay of Quinney. And they have an over-reliance on the existing programs that are obviously not working or they're re just doing funding reannouncements. And as I said, while there are some solid measures in this bill, which may encourage the constructions of more homes, more must be done now to catch up and ensure that Canadians have a roof over their head immediately. Specifically regarding the housing portion of the bill, the reality is that there's a lot more value in the Honourable Leader of the Opposition's Building Homes Not Bureaucracy Act as a bill, and it, because it goes far beyond just removing the GST off certain new builds and sets out a roadmap in bringing homes to more Canadians that they can afford. So ultimately, if the Liberal government's serious about addressing the housing affordability, they'd take this, uh, they'd take to the, they'd fast track the, the uh, leader of the officials opposition's bill and make it law today. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This